What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, bring incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is an executive coach, author, advisor, and keynote speaker that is joining us from Sydney, Australia. Please welcome Mark Hodgson. Mark, welcome to the show. Oh, Diana, it's it's an absolute privilege to to be here. I've got up early. It's uh, it's the morning in Australia. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I'm excited to talk to you. And it's always amazing to me, like when I talk to people in different parts of the world and like the time change and just like, you know, I really appreciate you getting up early. I've actually had someone from Australia on my show and we did it like late at night. So it was like nine o'clock at night for me. <laughs> and so it was like a more decent time for him. But um, I, I we talked a little bit about like your background and like kind of what what you used to do. So you are another like corporate refugee that did his own thing. And so can you tell us like what their turning point was for you going from corporate into becoming a coach? Yeah, ab 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 absolutely. So, so uh, I, I spent uh, probably the, the, the best, best part of 20, 25 years uh, it, it, building a corporate career based around uh, media and advertising. So advertising sales, uh, I, 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 I originally from the UK, uh, then uh, spent some time. We lived. My, my wife and I lived, ended up living in Hungary for five years because of her family in Hungary. So we 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 spent some fantastic days in in Budapest again. Uh, oh, wow! But selling selling. Uh, I was involved in at large out of home advertising, the big billboards. So we were do, we were doing that. Uh, then then we came to Australia because we had the wonder lost by then. So um, <laughs> we, we we came to uh, spent another ten years or so in Australia building. Um, Building uh, corporate careers, uh, and and then my and then I got a bit dis, dis, disenfranchised with the whole media thing. It's very kind of money orientated, and I think as you get a little bit older, the money thing becomes it's always important, but perhaps it becomes less important. You look yeah. for a, a little bit more meaning and purpose, and I couldn't see that. Yeah. Uh, so my last what turned out to be my last corporate role, uh, I, I ended up uh, leading a, a, a transformation in a large not for profit organization, and we turned. Uh, we turned a million dollar loss into a three million dollar profit, um, and that was what that was actually about: was helping people to unlock their potential because there were all these cr crazy yeah. rules and things. They were doing the wrong, had good people doing the wrong things, and they helped them to do the right things. Um, which and my favorite role about leadership is that the role of a leader is to bring out the greatness in others, yeah. uh, and that was a real privilege to do that. So that's that all sounds great, doesn't it? And at the end of that, we fixed it up. We turned a million dollar loss into a three million dollar profit, and then they made me redundant. I said, "What? Well, yeah. I thought, I thought they were going to Mark. That was amazing." And I said, "Yeah, that Mark, that was amazing. Thanks for fixing that up. Now see you later." Yeah. Uh, and that was the point. I thought, you know, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> this maybe is not for me. This corporate thing. I need to explore. Um, I guess my 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 own maverick instincts. Um, and probably perhaps I was a little bit of a corporate maverick in that sense. Didn't like fit them old enough. Um, but that then, and then we're talking about 15 years ago now, now uh, inspired me to set up my own consultancy, uh, which is what I do now. And I help, I help people to, um, yeah, to, 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 to transform and, and be their best, be their best self in a professional sense. And uh, yeah, I've been doing it for t about 12, 13 years now, and it's been a great road, but, but uh, yeah, ups and downs, as you would imagine. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't believe it. Well, I mean, being an entrepreneur in any sense is, is difficult because, you know, it's, it's, it's not consistent all the time. It ebbs and flows business. Ebbs, the ebb and flow of businesses can be challenging. If you don't have thick skin, you can't do it. But yeah. well, I mean, you've been all over the world. So what's one of your favorite places? Well, favorite countries that you visited aside from Australia, oh, you can't pick that because you live there now. Okay. So, 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 and, and I'm going to, I'm going to whisper this, uh, I'm going to whis whis whisper this, Deanna, because I don't want everyone to go there. But uh, I, I mentioned it just quickly: uh, Hungary and Budapest. Okay. Uh, we 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 live. It's 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 the most it's the most beautiful city. And it, what was funny when when we first went there? So this is this would be the the, the mid nineties. Yeah. Um. So bear in mind that's only a few years after the fall of the um yeah the 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 the, the, the wall. So yeah. and this and it was a former communist uh, society. So my um my office in in London. They really had in in their mind's eye this this place was like going to like you know one of those movies you know check yeah. Charlie and it was oh, all yeah. and there every yeah there was no there was no food and it was that's the way they thought of it right um and in re in reality it was the, the, this say so, uh, at that point uh, Hungary Budapest was was about three or four years out of out of communism okay. and the place was just it was so exciting everything was you know optimism new businesses yeah. great food very inexpensive. And it was like the best place ever to live. 
but we, but when when London called, you had to you had to kind of play into hey you know, oh I'm bearing up it's it's okay yeah we're, we're you know we're, we're we're getting through and I'm thinking actually it's party <laughs> actually we're having a great time yeah. Yeah. I don't want to let you know <laughs> I don't want to let you know that yeah. so that yeah and and we we we've we've loved that country for a long time and we actually got a little. Uh, we we we've got a little apartment in Budapest, which we still oh, nice. so we still go back there. But I was there two weeks ago. Oh, very cool! Very and cool. it's it's the most gorgeous city. So go there, but not too many of you. Okay, all right. Well, don't not too many people go there all at once. Um, exactly. So, yeah. Full so queue. I am not a fan of corporate America. I don't. I'm not employable in that sense because I've got too much of a voice. I'm a female, and I always question leadership because not all leaders are made equal, right? And I've experienced quite a few poor leaders in whenever I've been in, in corporate. So for you to make that switch and to kind of help a non for profit turn profitable, that had to that had to hurt. That had to sting a little bit. What when they, the, the when they let you go. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and but the and, and actually what, what what sits beneath that is that uh, and what, what hurts was I mean, oh yeah, obviously at one level it's a personal hurt. But sure. when you when 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 I when I when, when I it, and I, I I'd never done anything other than being told I was really good before. So right. there was yeah there, there was an ego thing for sure. sure, and there was never a sense of underperformance. So it wasn't about underperformance, but what was interesting and what really uh, grated and and still grates now actually if I'm honest, is the reason they uh, they exited me and my team is for the because the organisation had a lack of ambition. And they did. They 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 wanted they wanted a, a thing that was kind of broken, kind of fixed up, so it was okay. They yeah. didn't want excellence. So rather than say, yeah. "Hey, we did some really good," so I I I I worked with one one. Uh, the whole thing was like if the whole thing was was fifteen hundred people. I was working with a with a, a subdivision of like three hundred people. Okay. So wow. we fixed that up from being like the the black sheep underperforming to being like yeah. high performing. And so instead of going, "Hey, what are those guys doing there?" That's right. really good that we can maybe do to the rest of the organization. How can we take some of those things and bring it across and elevate and you know make the sure. other piece even better and 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 keep you know, keep um keep that process. They said instead of said they said they basically said thanks for fixing that up and now now we're we're very happy with mediocrity. See you later. And that that lack of ambition, especially in a not for profit, yeah, you know, that lack of striving for excellence. And by the way, excellence is that's not about people working sixty hours a week right. and making more money. Right. That's an holistic excellence of being the best you can be. Um, so I, that that really uh, that that really uh, was the thing that that, that that stuck in the craw most. But that lack of ambition um, right. for the organisation, and, and which is which is ultimately about poor, uh, poor leadership. I agree, hundred well, percent. Poor leadership yeah. at the top. Yeah. Is this not for profit still running their business or running their yeah not-for-profit? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, that but, has to but, be a pretty big not for profit if they had that many people. Yeah, yeah, no, it's quite quite a large not for profit, but and and the you know, but the but the I mean, it plays into some larger themes, which is which I think that lot for profit, I think a lot of not for profits play the victim. Oh yeah, you know they they play that yeah the, the that's the, how they the, make the, their money. Yeah, but it, it, yeah, absolutely, and, and don't get me I mean, wrong. A non for profit is like I think that that's just like a a corporate thing to say for the charity, but they really are for profit. Well, it, it, I mean, obviously, obviously, it depends. But my, 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 I guess, I guess, my point is, yeah, yes, yes, you can, yes, donations and fundraising, absolutely right. vital. But there's other, there's other. I mean, for example, this particular, this particular business, this was, this was, um, this was a for-profit division of a not-for-profit. Oh, this, okay. This division, okay. this division was was working with government to do some work that actually made revenue that then funded the community service sure. aspect. So, okay. yeah. Um, but it was, but it was that, it was that, like, it was that. Rather, rather than say, how can we, how can we make our business better and 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 our people better, so we get a better, better results holistically. Right. It was more like, you know, let, let's let's rattle the tin and play the victim, and we haven't got enough funding, and that that kind of, you right. know. And I think that I think there's a larger theme that too too many, too many people play and are encouraged to play the victim. Um, and let's, let's let's go the opposite way. Let's play. Let's uh, yeah. I, I talk about this. Like, yeah, the, you know, the hero's journey. Let's be the hero. Find the hero in you. Yeah. Not play the victim because the victim you'll plenty you'll spend your whole life playing the victim. Yeah. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, you know and I know there are yeah I've got there's too many people who are genuine victims. So please don't mishear me. I'm not saying there are of course they're genuine victims with horrible circumstances, and lives and and situations. But there's lots of people who kind of don't have that or the, or they let that define their whole lives by playing the victim. Oh, absolutely. I know plenty yeah. of people like that. And I personally, I think you can be a victim once. After that, you're you're a volunteer. 
So like you, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I think. Like, okay, I'm a victim once. Let me, what can I learn from this? But moving forward, I can no longer be a victim because I'm aware of what's happening and I, and I wear it, aware of what's happened to me. If I allow it to happen again, now I'm just volunteering to keep going through the same dysfunctional cycle. So yeah, anyway, 100%. we were, I, I, I digress. Um, so what a great opportunity for you to start, go off and do your own thing. Do you ever miss corporate now that you've been your own like boss for 12 years or whatever the number was? Uh, do, 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 do you know, it, it, I think in the, in the, not, not very often, some, sometimes, sometimes in the, sometimes in, uh, you know, if, 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 you, if your business has a rough patching, oh God, it would have, yeah. yeah. Maybe if I was still in corporate, because the the big thing, of course, is that working for yourself versus working, you don't get a paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> I no... know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. There's, I know. There's... And and that that's that that sounds. If you haven't experienced that, that sounds like oh okay. But if you you know you you when when you're completely responsible for the the money you generate, it changes everything. Um, but but no, a buy a lot. No, I I I I don't I don't. I don't. Um, and what's interesting, you know, I still work with quite a few corporates. But it's interesting, I think, especially in the last decade, how much, notwithstanding the overarching corporate themes are still there, a lot corporate is changing. You know, even the whole the COVID thing, the work from home, the the, yeah. the, 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 the flexibility that you now get within corporate that didn't exist when I, I mean, I, when I worked in corporate, it was five days a week and I went into Sydney on a, on a, on a motorbike or a bus and it was, you know, the whole commute thing. And yeah. now, you know, there's obviously a lot more flexibility, which I think is good. Yes. Um, but uh, no, but no, but by and large, I, I think it, on, 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 on balance, what I've gained through running my own business, meeting a whole lot of, you know, hundreds, thousands of extraordinary people getting, being lucky enough to work with a lot of them and coach, coaching them or working with their teams, you know, it's, it's grown, it's, it's grown, it's grown me. Uh, it's, it, it, it commercially, it's pretty good. Um, but, and it has, has far fewer of the downsides, I think, especially, when you, especially not just pers- individually, but also for the for the family, you know, yeah. when you're because I think I think to be really successful at corporate, or the, probably the the C suite level, which is probably where I was aiming for, I think you have to be kind of very self very self focused, arguably selfish. Yeah, uh, like an athlete, you know, Olympic athlete is probably Great. they need to yeah. be, you know, absolutely one thing focused, uh, so selfish. So I think it's funny as you get a bit older. I'm 58 now. I think those the the flows of those things become clearer when you see people yeah. who probably stayed in corporate. Yeah, they maybe have got a lot more money or whatever, but you kind of there's some relationships that aren't so great, and maybe their health isn't so good. Yeah. And now you kind of, I guess, I guess at some point you got, you got to pay the ferryman, right? Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> and I think some of them pay the ferry. <laughs> and funny enough, I work with a lot of them now. I'm how a lot of yeah. them, because I do a lot of work helping people transition from corporate to their post corporate. Oh, career okay. and, and life and what that and what, what that requires so the transition piece is really interesting and how what's that like that has to be very interesting to work with people like where you used to be in corporate to transitioning to something completely different because i think a lot of people find their identity within their career right and so and yeah. if, it's, if it's in that c-suite level or some higher up level in within corporate i think they become that that becomes their identity and so to break yeah. off from that is very difficult yeah, definitely. And one one of the things one of the things we, one of the things we talk about. So I do a lot of work with people to to build their brand. Um, yeah. Because and and I you know, think about the brand. I see you have to build a brand that that tells the world what you're about and that you're open for business. But crucially, it needs to be it needs to be portable and needs to belong to you. Yeah. Not the organisation. And most yeah you know, most corporates say I'm the uh, I'm John Smith. I'm the vice president. You know operations yeah. at Big Co. Yeah, and that's cool all the time. You work at Big Co, but what when you don't work at Big Co? Then right. then you say I'm John Smith, and they say oh, I'm John Smith. I used to, I right. used to be the something at Big Co. Yeah, and you say, well, okay, well that's cool, but who are you now? Right, who are you now? How are you going to help me? Why should I hire you? You know, uh, in any yeah. so and that and and not not only that sort of um, as you say, it's it's the mental uh, attachment. It's like yeah. it's the mothership, but you take the mothership away, you're just you're just you're just you're just a, a girl or a guy, right, standing right. there. So we have we do a lot of work with helping people to get really clear on what they're about, what they want, what value they bring, and then we need to capture that. Um, you know, in in they've got to, got to revitalize their network. We've got to capture it in their yeah. in in their brand, and we've got to give them a plan to transition, usually from a from a corporate existence. Which, as you say, um, for the for all the the goods and bads of course, the goods of corporate, everything's done for you. There's an IT right. department, you plug in. There's a there's a, yeah, right. there's this structure yeah. like you know, where whereas you suddenly, I'm going to start my own business. Okay, great. What do you got? I got a laptop. Okay, now what you got? What is the next <laughs> thing? How do I do my tax? How do I find customers? How do I do this? Yeah. How do I do? Yeah. 
and and on and on and on. And so there's a whole different. You kind of you got to be, you got you got you got to go from just plugging into a machine to being your own little. You know what a Swiss Army knife is? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're the, yeah, you're the Swiss Army knife. So you got to do all these <laughs> things yourself, and that's a, that's a big switch for someone who might have just become a very yeah, great degree yeah. of expertise in a very narrow area, and then everything else is done for them. And so suddenly you take, you pull you out of that and put you, put you, yeah. put you on the middle of the beach on your own. So now what are you going to do? And so it's 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 fascinating. But I love the work. It's 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 good. It's good work. And, yeah, it's uh, going to be pretty fulfilling. Yeah, I mean a lot of a lot of it's sort of helping people to, to sort of unlearn unlearn the corporate habits and 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 rituals, and then actually you know because uh, because a lot a lot of a lot of people become crafted, you know, shaped by the corporate structure. Yeah. Sometimes they're not able to express themselves. They kind of, they, they, yeah. And I, I, I always get this vignette. Yeah, this is what I think, but then I've got to put that through the corporate filter. What, what can I actually, what can I actually say? Yeah, I think this, and I say that. You know, so, yeah. so that, yeah. Did you? Look, I think I got a lot of. Not all. Don't get me wrong. A lot of corporates are great, but some aren't. A lot of people are really contorted. You know, kind of fitting in this thing that they don't love, and it kind of it feeds them, and but it's not great. And so we've got to help them become yeah. really clear on who they are and then give them a plan. And that's the main thing, give them a plan to transition from a corporate role to their, you know, to their, to what I call their second half. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and the thing I focus on a lot is actually the transition piece because what we're talking about is transformation. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm in my corporate role either, you know, I've done it for enough now. I'm ready for the next thing or, you know, I really hate it or uh, I, I'm fearful I'm going to lose my role. And I'm actually always really wanting to do something else. So that's the, yeah. that's the, that's the stuck state that most people stuck, frustrated kind of end, end, of, end of chapter story that most people find themselves in. They've got some, some version of what the transformed state is. Yeah. I'm, I want to, I want to set up my own uh, consultancy. I want to help people yeah. do this, that, or the other thing, or I want to, you know, I want to set up my small business or whatever. So they, they can often see the the, 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 the next state or see some of it, the transformed state. But yeah. it's where to start. What does the transition actually look like? That's and I spent a lot of time in that space. You need a plan. Uh, you need to rethink your network uh, and really change your network. And and then you and then also you need to work very hard and make sure you've got a um, as to that kind of idea of that personal brand, especially in the digital age. You need a personal brand yeah. that is that belongs to you. And it, and that, what what what, that, what those three things do enable you to transition from the current state to the next state yeah. with a plan without losing a ton of money hopefully right. uh, and also yeah. without losing reputation and confidence because that's the that's that's the that's oh, the, yeah. the fun that's the bit that people because they're scared to come up because if yes if, if you've been in corporate for 20 30 years you come and you leave it suddenly you feel very lonely you've left the, yeah. that big 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 sort of uh, you know comfort blanket that is corporate and you, yeah. that you've had kind of probably a love hate relationship with i hate this thing yeah but it keeps me warm you know, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So, so that it's fascinating it's fascinating and uh, and it, it's also interesting that you know a lot of people going through that um that transition um and i and i you know and i've worked with hundreds of them and they, these, these are you know typically in the, the, the late 40s early 50s right. that kind of that kind of age very accomplished from the outside you say they're successful but a lot of them really are quite low in confidence it's it's yeah. interesting you know because i can not. imagine i can imagine yeah. so that's what my next question would be like how hard is it for them to figure out their personal brand you know because they are so molded by the corporate machine that that's got to be so difficult for them to really tap into what that means for them yeah yeah and and and, and that's that's I, I do a lot of work with that and and the the, the, the thing the thing with the personal brand like I think a lot of people misunderstand it and they obsess on well what's what's my color what's my content what's my font what's my kind of vibe and it's like that I always see that as the tip of the I see the brand pieces right. like an iceberg uh, and the the things I've just spoken about they're the, they're the bits that are above the water you know that the, that the bit you see your, your LinkedIn content or your content on social yeah. media or in other places but the work you need to do is it's below that, uh, and and th and that's exploring key three key three things, which is a, it, is your expertise, which is what you know, your experience, which is where you've been. Yeah. But the, the third thing, and, and then most people are pretty good at that. And that and you know, if you if you if you have expertise and experience, that usually makes you a credible subject matter expert, which is great. But yeah. the world's full of credible subject matter experts. So how do we how do we differentiate you? Yeah. And so we need to bring a third thing into conjunction. With your expertise and your experience which is your essence Ooh. essence is your passion yeah so expertise experience, essence and when you bring your essence and that essence is who you be your personality your traits your hopes your passions your faults yeah all yeah. when you get all of that when you when you when you when you bring your essence into conjunction with your expertise and experience 
not only are you a, you a, come a, come a, come over as, as as a credible subject matter expert, you um, you project uh, conviction and you project project authenticity. Yeah. So we are drawn to people who are. Oh, you need to be smart and you need to you need to right. you know you need to have a, have a track record of success. But if we can then understand what we're about, um, and we can speak about it with with conviction and authenticity, yeah. that and that's a fairly decent piece of work as you can imagine. Once you do that work, then you know who you are, how you add value, uh, who you help, why you're different. When you, when you know that, then you capture that in your brand, and that means and, and what what all that piece means is when you do that and do that well, you're actually able to show up authentically in your brand as who you really are. And when you can do that, boom, that's powerful. But as you can probably hear, there's a few steps to get to that. But you can do, you can do, and and. And a lot of it is um, a lot of it's editing, you know, murder your duck, cutting out stuff, you know, and, and it's it's taking stuff back to the essence of who you are, what you're about, what you're passionate about, where you want to go, who you want to help, those kind of things, and then you start to craft again what your brand is, and it might be uh, it might be quite different, it might be very different from kind of what you've done in corporate potentially, but that's the essence of doing it well is that is that it's not just to have a brand because the brand. If the brand doesn't quite fit you or it feels a bit yeah. false or it feels a bit too big for you or it feels, you know, you can't, it doesn't, you, go, mm, you know, it, and, and again, yeah, it doesn't work and, and it doesn't ring. It's like a broken bell. It doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't, doesn't chime true. But if it does chime true um, and you get it right, then, then that's when people can start to, to, to build that and move into that. And, you know, right. and slowly over time, they build, they build confidence. They build a new momentum outside of corporate. Um, and, they and they're more of, more fulfilled living, live, leading a purposeful life. Hundred percent, yeah, ab absolutely. So, so the the brand, so so yeah, I see all these, uh, yeah, there's all, I see all these young kids. So I'm sounding like an old man. All the young kids, the personal brand, this and personal brand, and they're great <laughs> on the social media stuff. And it's don't get me wrong, it's important to be to yeah. know that. That's not. It's kind of. It's like that's all. That's the icing. But you got to do the work on the cake first. Yeah. And 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 and, and because a lot of the people we're talking about. They're not comfortable. Yeah, you know, they're they're not digital natives. Most of them. They're not. They're not comfortable just splashing themselves all over LinkedIn and Facebook and all that. Um. So, but slowly over time, you know, we get them. But it's got to be authentic. It's got to be credible. Um. And it's got to really. It's got to be commercial as well. There's no point. There's no point having a brand that doesn't. You know, you've got to make money, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah. So it's 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 fascinating, and, and I love doing that work, and I've done done a lot of it, and uh, it's 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 lovely to see the people. It's almost like once once they start and slowly build a bit. Oh, I can do that. I can say this, and and you you can feel their old confidence coming back. Yeah. Um. And then and then and then they're off on their on the on their next chapter, their post corporate chapter. I love that. That's beautiful. So you are also before we start wrapping things up, you're also an author. Can you tell us about your book or books? Yeah, yeah. So so my 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 book my book is uh my 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 book is called t t t t t Time Time to Shine. Um. And it's actually about it's it's in about it's um, which I'm, I'm I'm looking over to see what the, so it's time to shine, unlock your full potential to succeed in a post pandemic world. But can you bring it up um, it up up a little bit more? There we go. I love it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And 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 what's what's I mean uh, what's interesting about this? So I've I've it, it and what it is um it, it talks about some of the things we've been talking about, um. But what's interesting about it? I mean, it's 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 my mum's favourite book, so that's that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, but it's also um, the way I actually wrote it. It's actually a compilation. I I, I write a a weekly um, a weekly a blog called Pinch of Thought, um, and really all, all I've done, if you like, uh, is taken about a hundred of those blogs uh, and and pulled them together in, into 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 a book. Um, that kind of works um, well, and we divide it into six sections: like self leadership, uh, personal brand, building confidence, um, and th and so forth. But the, the 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 interesting thing I think is that yeah, you know, when we come to the brand piece and you're creating content, you know, yeah. it's yeah, you know, this whole idea. It's great to write a book, but don't go and disappear for six months to write your book. You know, yeah. it's build comp, build content, get your thinking out there. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting in this world of AI, everyone's going, oh, I can put it into chat GPT oh, yeah. and content and it, and it can, but you've got to do the thinking you, well, because the sure. thing, the, the, yeah, the thinking is where you learn and grow. You've got to, got to actually do your own thinking. Um, anyway, so, so I've just captured, captured that, um, and that evolves and it, and what it does, it makes it an easy read, nice. um, because it's essentially, essentially it's a hundred short, you know, two, three minute reads, uh, 
captured together all in the overarching theme of of time to shine and we and we've got a we've got an ebook version of that that uh, maybe of interest to interest to people so yeah that's that that's the book um uh, which uh, which keeps evolving uh, and i love it i love it that is fantastic where can people so where can people find you connect with you and learn more about you as a coach and you as a keynote speaker and purchasing the book okay so we've got my website which is uh mark hodgson dot uh, dot com um you can check you can check you can check me out on linkedin yeah. Um, which I think we got the link in, 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 in the show notes and yeah. another, th- uh, the, 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 uh, the, there's also a link to the time to shine book. So I'd love to, yeah. love for people to look there. And the other thing that might be really interesting to people uh, listening to this is I've got a free personal brand diagnostic. Um, the link is in the show notes and what that is, uh, it takes you, it's, it's, it's a very cool thing. Um, it, you, you, it takes you about two minutes. You answer nine questions. Okay. Uh, and, and on the back of answering nine questions, uh, you will send you a 16 page report and it tell it tells you where you are on what I call the influencer dial and the influence, the, inf- okay. the influencer dial has five levels. It goes from asleep to agitated, to active, to amplified, to awesome. So five A's. So Ooh, are you asleep or are you awesome? Do you like that? <laughs> asleep, agitated, active, amplified, awesome. And it tells you where you are, where you are on the influencer dial. I love um, and you know, the sleep is those people who are like oh, social media. I'm not on LinkedIn. I don't want a picture. I, why, why would I put my, those people? Yeah. Uh, I hope that's not you. Uh, but we need to, we need to, so well, it, it, definitely it, on me. I don't, I don't, no, no, I know. I, I, I think you might be somewhere towards the awesome end, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it's, it's, it gives you, it gives you a nice report and it gives you some ideas on what to do. And there's a, there's a bit, there's a bit of some free online training as well. So that might be a, if people are interested in, in this area and just trying to get a sense of not just where they are, but what, where do you, what, what's the next thing you need to do? Yeah. Uh, then that's a great resource. And uh, yeah, that, that and the book could be really interesting to you. And you can Excellent. find out about the coaching and so forth by contacting me through LinkedIn or also through the website. Yes, you guys, I'm going to put all those links in the show notes. So at least go check out and see if you're asleep or awesome and um, go follow Mark on LinkedIn. And if you have any questions about his coaching, do not hesitate to reach out. Mark, this is the part of the show where I like to ask for less words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? Oh, wow. Words of wisdom. Um, I'll talk about um, a, a friend of mine who died about 18 months ago, who lived okay. life very, very, very fully. Uh, and he died at 52 with an with a unexpected heart condition, which was really tragic. But he was one of those guys who, you know, he was always doing crazy things, um, you know, uh, always doing active things, running charities, um, just a, a larger than life character. Uh, and off the back of that, I think my, my own self-talk and what I talk to others about is, yeah, life is life's life, life's too short to play it small. Yeah. So, life is too short to play it small. So have have a crack, have a go, be brave. Uh, you know, don't die wondering. You know, don't don't if you're stuck in if you're in a place of stuckness or unhappiness or just somehow like eh, have 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 a go at finding what's next. And uh, you you may be successful, you may you may not. But what you can guarantee is if you don't move, you can guarantee you'll stay exactly where you are. So don't die wondering and life's too short to live it, to, to play it small. Play it big. Have a crack. Yes, Have yes. I love it. Have a crack. Have With a that crack. being said, Mark, thank you so much for being a guest today. It was an absolute pleasure. We'll have to have you back for a follow-up and just kind of see it where things are with you. But it has been so much fun to hear your story and what you're doing for people that are stuck in that uh, executive role and maybe asleep. So keep waking them up. <laughs> keep waking them up. <laughs> keep waking them up. Thanks, Deanna. It's been you're, awesome. Really enjoyed welcome. it. You're welcome. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.